Last year, when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage that was identifying winning stocks with massive upside. Like Riot Blockchain, before it shot up 10,090%. Digital Turbine, before it shot up 789%. Overstock.com, before it shot up 1,050%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Jacob. Right now, you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next and in any type of market. Simply go to PowerGagePreview.com for a free look. Again, that's PowerGagePreview.com. Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It is the 11th of January, 2023. We've got a big show coming up. We're going to talk about these markets off to a pretty strong start. And based on history, the first five days up over 1%, what that means for stocks going forward for the rest of the year. And then... We all have our New Year's resolution. Be healthy, get in shape. Well, I got some stocks for you to get you in shape and make you some money at the same time. All this and more coming up right now on Making Money. Again, this is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. This is Making Money. It's January 11th, 2023. A little bit different to Wednesday instead of a Tuesday. As you can see, I have a little twinge in my throat, so we took the day off to rest my uh, vocal cords, but we're back at it here today. We got a show coming for you tomorrow as well. Uh, great guest tomorrow, uh, Marco Papich. Uh, if you've never heard of him, he's a, a big macro thinker and uh, looks at politics, looks at big trends similar to, uh, to myself. Uh, we have a great conversation coming up for tomorrow's show as well, I'll let you know. But let's jump into these markets. As I mentioned in the, in the open, uh, we've had a pretty nice move here to begin the year. And if I look at the first five trading days of the year, uh, this is an old um, kind of indicator, if you will, that that a lot of people have been following for a long time uh, on Wall Street. And I always follow all this stuff because I love numbers and I love stats. That being said, just because one indicator says it's maybe a buy or sell, there's much more to it than that. But you take into consideration all the different indicators, all the different trends, and then you try to put the odds in your favor. Well, if you take a look back at history, uh, when we have the first five trading days of the year, uh, if they're up on the year, if, if the market's up, the S&P is up during the first five trading days, the likelihood of the market being up is very high. We also take a look then if the market is up over 1%. Uh, if the market's up over 1% in that time frame, typically, uh, we see the market really kind of take off for the rest of the year. I'm going to break down those numbers here for you in a second. But again, I just want to put an asterisk next to this because even though uh, I, I believe, you know, this, th this is something we should follow, it's five trading days. I don't care about five months. I look for five years and beyond. I'm a long-term investor. But again, a lot of times when the year starts out strong, it just historically shows that we have a strong market. So let me give you these specific numbers here. So when stocks finish the first five days higher, as I mentioned, which we have, S&P was up 1.1%. The S&P is on higher by average since 1950, these numbers go back to, by higher on average by 14% for the rest of the year and up 83% of the time. Now, if the index is up more than 1% in the first five trading days, the increase, the average increase going forward is 15.4% and positive 87% of the time. So those are really good numbers if you think about it, because the average year for the S&P going back to 1950 is a gain of 9.1% and up 71% of the time. And if it's down in the first five trading days, which it was last year, the average gain going forward is 0.3% and only up about 54% of the time. So the numbers actually make sense. Uh, again, that being said, I don't put all my eggs into one basket and look at one indicator. But speaking of looking at things, let's take a look real quick at the S&P 500 here this morning. We've been open for about 45 minutes. We're up about four tenths of percent. And as you can see, the last couple of days, we've been trending higher. If we close up here today, it'd be the best close that we've seen in about three weeks since about mid-December. Um, and we're getting close to this white line here. This is that downtrend line I've been talking about for literally months now, almost a year. And if we extend it, we need to extend it even further now because we keep going. We tried to break above it, but we really didn't close above. We closed above it by a little, little minuscule. This means it opened there and closed down. 
coming up on this again. We're coming up on that blue line, a 200 day moving average. A red one's a 50 day moving average. We got a lot of resistance around here right now, folks. So this is important to see how the market reacts the rest of this month. If we see the S&P continue to rally through those levels, that is extremely important because now we start looking at a series of potentially higher highs and higher lows, turning this downtrend into an uptrend. And again, I talked about this last show and I talk about this a lot. The factors that crushed the market last year, rising interest rates, inflation, geopolitical concerns, the Fed, all should be getting better. Inflation has peaked. There's no argument. It peaked at 9.1. Inflation has peaked. Interest rates slash Fed most likely will peak first quarter, maybe early second quarter, flat, and then probably start coming down. Geopolitical concerns in Ukraine, Russia, around the world. That's, you know, that's, a, that's a wild card. I don't know. I don't see them getting any worse right now, especially in Ukraine, Russia. And the concern was the winter months, uh, which we are in right now, uh, that we were going to have an energy shortage in Europe. It's not happening. It's actually, it's okay. Their, their supplies are good. So a lot of the really scary stuff that had us on the sidelines and selling is disappearing. And Marco and I will talk about that in tomorrow's show as well. But they're starting to disappear. By the time the media tells you they're gone, the market's already rallied. We need to start looking now, but we'll let these charts determine and tell us when the time is to get in. I, and I'm not saying go full blown right now, but there's some, idea, there's some ideas out there that we want to look at. Speaking of which, Let's get into the crux of today's show. And today's show, I want to talk about New Year's resolutions and how to get healthier and uh, wealthier, really, health and wealth. Uh, one of our colleagues, Doc Eifrig, has a health and wealth bulletin, um, which is great because he's a doctor and he's a great uh, investor as well. So I looked up the top New Year's resolutions. They shouldn't come as a surprise. Number one is exercise more. You can tell that just by going to the, your local gym and see how many more people are coming. Two is eat healthier. I think we all want to eat healthier. Three is lose weight. Four is save more money. And five is spend time with family. So four of the five are health and wealth. But the top three are very much health uh, related. So what I did is I dove into some health related companies. I'm going to go through four stocks. We're going to compare these four companies and uh, give you an idea if there's any investment opportunities here. First, let's take a look at the four stocks I'm going to look at and how they've done over the last year. You can see here. Four stocks we're going to take a look at is Exponential Fitness, XPOF, and the last year up about 51%. Uh, Lifetime Group Holdings down about 4%. Planet Fitness down about 4%. The S&P down 15 and a half, and then Peloton down 70%. So a big difference here between 50 and 70, that's 120% difference in returns between two stocks in this group that we're going to take a look at. And the first one I'm going to take a look at um, is, is XPOF, which is Exponential uh, Fitness. This is, a, you'll show you a chart here in a second, a stock that's been doing very, very well. As I mentioned, up 50% in the last 12 months. It's about a $700 million company. They own a bunch of different franchises. Um, Club Pilates, uh, which is a Pilates a studio. Row House, which is obviously a row machine. Uh, Cycle Bar, Cycle. Pure Bar, which is a bar workout. Uh, ATK, which is a kind of a mix of a bunch of things. Yoga 6, uh, which is yoga. Rumble, which is uh, boxing. So they have a little bit of everything. And if I take a look at their revenues, um, 2021, uh, we're down a bit because it was still kind of that post-COVID area, but bounced back a little bit from 2020. The revenues came in at $155 million. Uh, this year, the estimates for $239 million. And then looking at the 2025, almost $400 million in uh, revenue. So you're seeing really nice growth, again, for a $700 million company. Uh, earnings per share, lost money in 2021, lost 80 cents a share. Again, a lot of post-pandemic kind of stuff going on. This year, looking to make 9 cents a share. Next year, looking for 97 cents a share. By 2025, looking for a buck 86 a share. Again, amazing, amazing growth, folks. From negative last year, nearly $2 a share in three years, or two years from now, I should say, it's 2023 already. And just this week, it was actually, I put the show together over the weekend, uh, but this week on Monday, they came out and they, they said they recorded um, system-wide sales for America, North America of $1.03 billion for the year ended December 31st, 2022. That was an increase uh, over $710 million, um, 46% increase from 2021. Uh, they expect sales figures to exceed uh, the high end of their guidance. Uh, their guidance was in a range of about $995 million to $1.06 billion. So they do expect it to be at a higher end of the range. Um, 
They also said for the full year of 2022, they opened 26, uh, surpassed, sorry, surpassed 26 studios that are open right now. Total licenses sold to over 5,400. That means licenses for people to open new franchises uh, of their 10 brands around the world. Uh, they grew their total membership by 32% year over year, up to 590,000 members. Uh, studio visits were also up 32%, over 39 million visits. Uh, so you're seeing really here, um, and then uh, same store sales, which is stores that are open at least a year prior, uh, up of 25%. Uh, which is uh, sales growth of 25%, which is extremely impressive as well. So you're, you're seeing some really just solid numbers from top to bottom. And let's take a look at the chart, folks. As you can see, your exponential fitness uh, closed, um, what was that? I guess it was, that was Monday at the best level ever. Uh, down a little yesterday. Today, we're at the high today right now, kind of trading right around that all-time closing high. Uh, some resistance around this level from March, but we zoom out a little bit. That, that's the all-time high. The stock went public back in July of 2021, fell down around 10 bucks, and boy, it's, it's done nothing but really uh, kind of go up since we got past this whole pandemic thing. And uh, again, this is a kind of company where you're seeing growth. The trend of people wanting to be healthy is not going away. Uh, you know, people it was at home fitness for a while, and then suddenly people realized they need the motivation of going to uh, different classes. And, you know, these, these fitness facilities offer classes, so you're actually motivated by the instructor. You know, I founded a Pilates studio a couple of years ago, um, and uh, one of our competitors was uh, Club Pilates, which is owned by Exponential. That's how I know this company very well. I uh, did some, you know, background checks into them. And this is a very well-run company, one that I would definitely put at the top of my watch list if you're looking for some health and wealth mixture. Well, stock number two is about $2.75 billion company, and this is Lifetime Group Holdings. And uh, this is a, a little bit different. They're, they're large, multi-use athletic facilities. If you've ever been to a lifetime um, gym, let's call it, or athletic facility, it's enormous. It's got a little bit of everything. Um, they, uh, it's the largest owner and operator also of pickleball courts across this network of their, their luxury athletic country clubs, as they call them. And uh, they're actually bringing their pickleball courts to New York City. And they're going to put it at the street level of their lifetime sky, the one that's over uh, in Hell's Kitchen by where I used to live which is kind of exciting. I'll talk more about the pickleball here in a minute, but let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, they had revenue 2021 last year, about 1.3 billion. Um, 2022, looking for a bit of a, a bounce up. By 2025, 2.7. Lost money last year, looking to lose about 40 cents again this year per share. Gain of 25 next year, 2025, up to 65 cents per share. So, um, and then they came out Monday as well with preliminary Q4 revenue. Um, in the range of about 472 to 473 million, uh, which is kind of in the mid, mid of their guidance. Their guidance was 460 to 490. So it's really kind of that mid range. Uh, analysts were looking for 478 million. So a little bit lower than that, though the stock was up on the news. And they expect, uh, they came out and they said that next year, uh, they expect full year uh, revenue guidance uh, to come in around 2.2 uh, to 2.3 billion. And this was again Monday, they came out with these numbers. So uh, the market liked it, the stock's up, and I'll show you a chart here in a second. But let's go back to you know, kind of the facilities they have. They have these enormous facilities, which if there was one closer to me, I'd probably go. And the reason for that is you could do everything from playing, you know, uh, squash to pickleball, we'll talk about in a minute, to the gym, to swimming, to shooting basketball, to sauna. It's nice. It's, it's, it's truly like a country club of health. Um, health and wellness and, and athletics. And I, I like that. So that's something where if there was one closer, I would actually probably definitely go to it because some days you don't want to just lift weights or some days you don't want to do cardio. You want to do different things. They offer classes. You know, it's, it's really, it's a great setup for a lot of people. And, it, and to me, it's a reasonable uh, entry level um, price. It's not the next stock we're going to talk about Planet Fitness. It's not 10 bucks a month, but it's a little bit more, but it's still reasonable for people that want to stay in shape. And um, as I mentioned, pickleball, which I, I, people laugh because I became uh, an addict of pickleball. I got my, my little racket or my paddle right in there, my balls. I've got a new, new paddle. And um, it, it, it is amazing. Like even in Nicaragua, uh, where I live, we just finished building three brand new pickleball courts with lights. Um, and, you know, it's people always say it's like tennis. It's not like tennis. It, to me, it's about a mix of tennis, ping pong, <clears throat> maybe throwing badminton. And it grew about the, the, the popularity grew about 40% uh, from 2019, 2021. Uh, it's being considered America's fastest growing sport. So with lifetime fitness, having 
the courts and, and being the largest um, owner operator pickleball courts in the country. That's big. You got to play on pickleball here as well. And I didn't even know that until I started doing the research. So this is stock that let's take, let's take a look at it here uh, and you'll see the chart. Not as nice as uh, exponential, but what I'm seeing here is we bottomed in November and we, you talk about the market, you know, kind of coming up against that December high. We blew right through it. Uh, big volume coming in the last couple of days, closing near the high of the session for six consecutive days here. That means buyers are coming into this stock. I would never chase it up six days in a row, but this is definitely something I put on my watch list. If you zoom out here, folks, you can see it broke this long term downtrend. It broke it and it looks good. This is this is a stock I, I, that I definitely want to put on my watch list. Uh, the next one is uh, Planet Fitness. So this is going to be a little bit more um, of the less expensive, I guess, if you will, of uh, entry level for um, working out. So nearly seven billion dollar company. So it's the biggest of the three. Uh, most of its revenue comes from its uh, franchise business unit. So it franchises out uh, its facilities. Uh, at the end of 2021, they had about 15.2 million members, um, which, you know, isn't too too bad. And that's compared to uh, end of 2017, which take back four years, obviously, 10.6 million. So they've added four and a half, 4.6 million people in that time frame. That's a, that's pretty good growth. Um, it continues to go up, uh, which is now and they now stand at about 16.6 million. So just from last year till now, 1.4 million, uh, they added on. Um, so uh, nice, nice growth as far as the members are concerned. I mean, look at revenue last year, 587 million. This year, looking for 926 million. By 2025, looking for 1.4 billion. Again, solid growth. 82 cents a share last year, profitable. This year, looking for a buck 59. 2025, $2.91 a share. Again, big growth top side, big growth bottom line. This is a, a, a different type of animal. Again, very cheap to get into Planet Fitness. I'm sure there's probably deals going on right now if you wanted to get into it. Um, I, I, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm looking up right now. It, it's it's like 10 bucks a month. You can get in very, very low. Yeah, it's starting at $10 a month now. I don't know what you get for 10 bucks a month, but, you know, that's accessible to most people that just want to go in there and get access to some type of health facility. So um, there's a need for that as well. Take a look at a chart here. Um, pretty similar to Lifetime Fitness where it's breaking above uh, the high that we said, it broke above the December high. It's above the August high. Now it's the less, less level we've seen since the uh, end of uh, April, which that's pretty damn impressive. Uh, again, bigger volume coming in uh, recently. Uh, so there's something going on here, folks. There, there, there's something that that's, you're, you're seeing money coming into uh, the niche classes. You're seeing money coming to the big facilities. You're seeing money coming to the lower end facilities, such as Planet Fitness. But there's one more stock we want to take a look at in this realm that we can't overlook uh, because it was a major player at once. And it's actually had some money coming into it recently as well. And that's Peloton. So a PTOA. Uh, now about a $3.2 billion company. Would you believe in January of 2021, it was worth about 50 and nearly $50 billion. And that was obviously through the pandemic, the height of the pandemic. Gyms were closed. The, the fitness facility I owned, uh, we were forced to close by the city of Baltimore. Um, so you were forced to stay away and then people were too concerned to go back. They didn't want to catch anything. So they got their Pelotons at home, their treadmills, their cycles. And, you know, it became a, a huge trend. Maybe it was a fad because it, it seems as if people are getting back into the gyms now. Um, their fiscal first quarter, which ended in September, <clears throat> sales of Pelotons Connect to Fitness products, which are the bikes and treadmills, as I just mentioned, uh, came at $204 million dollars. Uh, that's a drop of 59%, uh, and the company lost $408 million. Uh, keep in mind also that their co-founder, um, co-CEO and co-founder, John Foley, uh, recently left the company back in September. Uh, and then also recently, the uh, other co-founder, uh, Mr. Kushi, he left as well. So they've both left. That says something for the company. Um, do I still think there's a future of connected uh, workouts? Yes. Uh, but it's for people who can afford it because it's not cheap. You have to pay a monthly subscription just as you'd be paying to go to the gym. And yeah, you have the classes. So you can be a bit motivated, but you also want to get out of the house a lot of people as well. And look at this chart. It's just so much different than everything else, folks. Uh, the only positive I can give it, it seems like it's forming a nice bottom around seven, eight bucks. And uh, it's at 1026 today. It's been up the last few days this, uh, to kick off the year. But it's got huge resistance at around 13 and a half to 14 I don't know if it's above there, but even if it was a 14, it's still about a 35% gain from here. Um, but I, I just 
this is a, a company that it's going in a wrong direction. Exponential, Planet Fitness, Lifetime, all big growth. This is going in the opposite direction. And I don't like to see that. So this is one I'd stay away from. Could somebody come in and buy this? Yeah, I can see that. You know, like I said, it's about $3.2 billion company. Could I see somebody coming in and buying it for $5 billion? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's about a, what, 55% gain from here? I, I, I could see that happening. Yeah. I mean, pay, what, 16 17 bucks a share? 100% I could see that happening. Because you look back at where the stock was, it was, a, it was above $170 a share. If you're buying at 17 you're getting a 90% off the high. Not that that means anything going forward, but I think this could be a uh, takeover candidate 100% at some point. But you never buy a stock solely because you think it'd be taken over. Not at all. So again, just to wrap this up, it's all about health and wealth. We want to have a healthy year. We want to have a wealthy year. Listening to the show will help with the wealth part. The health part, you got to push yourself a little bit. Maybe get a trainer. Maybe go to one of these facilities I just mentioned. Uh, get out there and walk, move, whatever it is. I have my list of things to do every day. I have to get my steps in. I have to get my fresh air in. I need to look at the sun so much. The sun's out. Um, it's just, it, to tell you what, it makes you feel happier and healthier. I say that as I'm suffering through a sinus infection, but I will tell you, it does make you better. And then wealth's not everything, folks. Money's not everything, but you work hard for your money and let's help you make that money work for you now and create whatever you call wealth because it's going to be different for everybody out there. But again, thank you so much for watching the show. And here's to a healthy and wealthy 2023. That was Making Money and I'm Matt McCall. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.